The Yukihide Nori Bento, by far one of the most defining battles in all of Shokugeki no Soma, mostly because it allowed Grandpa to finally dress himself. I don't know why I haven't done this sooner, but at, well, actually, I can tell you why. Do you know how hard it was to find this bento? This bento box is from Zoji, Zoji Rushi. Fantastic company. Check this out. Bento. Chopsticks. But this. This is what we needed to make this recipe come to life. Granted, this is more cylindrical than the one that Yukihira uses, but I think we'll get away with this. The dashi is going to be the primary factor in how everything tastes for today. So for this, I'm going to use about four strips, about four inches long each of your kombu to start simmering in a little bit of water. You don't actually want to bring this to a boil, otherwise it can be bitter. So right before those bubbles start forming, we're gonna actually remove the kombu from the liquid. And if you feel like it, save the kombu and make a second dashi later. Now we're gonna add all of our bonito flakes, but you know, we gotta feed the monster first. He just, he's going crazy as soon as I open the bag. For every cup of water, I use about one cup worth of bonito flakes. And I kind of just eyeballed this because we just needed a lot of it. This is gonna be all the flavor. Sit, 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 up, up, ow, ow, get up, ow. After being punctured by Gandalf, I was finally able to get back to my stock. Now, once this comes up to a simmer, you want to immediately turn it off after about 30 seconds and let this just hang out for about 10 minutes. Now, to bump up the flavor even more, I'm going to use a concentrated hondashi, which is another fish type stock. I'm going to use about one tablespoon just to bring this up just a little bit. After those 10 minutes have steeped, we're going to remove all of the bonito flake that has been soaked, but we're going to keep this for another part of this recipe. You are going to need this, so make sure you don't toss it. We're gonna go ahead and strain out the rest of this in a fine mesh strainer just to make sure you have a really clear and beautiful dashi broth. Yes, it is a little bit of a mess, but you're going to wanna save as much of this dashi broth as possible because it is used throughout the entire recipe. This is gonna be the bonito flakes that we're gonna save for later, and this is going to be your two batches worth of dashi. We're going to need a lot of it because we're gonna reduce quite a bit of it. Unfortunately, they didn't really talk about this in the anime, but we're gonna make a pickled shallot. Now, pickled shallots are relatively easy to make, and they are kind of an umami bomb for any recipe that you really want to use. You want to make sure your shallots are about a quarter inch of thickness, so that way when we add our vinegars, they don't disintegrate too much. For this, I'm going to use equal parts red wine vinegar and rice wine vinegar. I'm using about one cup of each. This is going to help balance the overall acidity. We're also going to add a little bit of sugar to brighten everything up because there is a lot of acid in here, so the sugar will help mellow everything out. For this, I'm going to use about one half cup worth of raw sugar. Oh, and a pinch of salt. I'm going to toss in a few bay leaves for this. You can use whatever spices you want, but bay leaves are really nice because they help mellow out the shallots. I'm going to use about four for this, and then we're going to bring this to a light simmer just to dissolve all of the sugars. Once it comes up to a simmer, this is when we're going to actually turn it off to just let it cool before we add it to our plastic container. You want to use a little bit of a deep container like the one I'm using here or a mason jar or something similar so that way when you pour all of your liquid in it does have full coverage over the top of your shallots. If the liquid doesn't quite come over the top like mine is, just take a fork and give it a good forking just to press everything back down because the shallots will eventually break down just a little bit. Now to finish off this sauce, you're going to need a little bit of mayo. I'm going to use a little bit of homemade mayo that I had laying around and if you want to see how to make mayo, check out my homemade mayo video. To about three tablespoons worth of mayo, I'm going to add about two tablespoons worth of chopped parsley. You can use whatever herbs you want, but I know you can use the chopped parsley. Go ahead and dump this straight into your mayo, and then we're going to bust out some of our beautifully pickled shallots. These had actually sat overnight, so that way they'd be ready. I do like a little bit of a crunchiness to my pickles, so these held up really, really well. We're going to go ahead and chop these up into a smallish dice. You don't want to puree them or anything, but you also don't want big chunks. You want a nice texture to it, almost like a pickle relish. So get your parsley and your shallots into your mayo, give it a really good stir. If you feel like it's a little bit loose, you can always add in a touch more mayo, and go ahead and hit this with some salt and black pepper. And if you feel like it's too thick, you can actually use some of the pickling liquid to thin it back out. Go ahead and throw some plastic wrap or a lid on it or whatever you're using and throw this in the fridge because we're not going to need this until very much later. 
Now for those nori pearls. To be honest, this is the bane of this entire recipe. It is a pain to put together, but we're going to do it. For this, we're gonna use about two cups or 16 ounces worth of dashi and about four sheets worth of nori. I wanted to bump this up just a little bit by including a significant amount. To this, we're gonna add in two tablespoons worth of soy sauce, one tablespoon worth of mirin, and one tablespoon worth of sugar. Give this a good stir to just kind of incorporate all of your ingredients, and then we're gonna bring this to a simmer and just let all those flavors simmer together for about 10 to 15 minutes. After that time is over, we're gonna go ahead and strain out all of this seaweed, and we're actually gonna keep the seaweed because it has a ton of flavor. Since this doesn't actually yield a lot of liquid, you do wanna make sure you press out all the seaweed to get all of that beautiful liquid out of there, and then remember to save this. This doesn't yield too much, but this should be enough to make the amount of pearls that we need. Remember, this is gold to us right now, so we're gonna go ahead and cool this down and wait to use it. So while we're waiting for that to cool down just a bit, we're gonna take our questionable scale, and we're gonna scale out 100 grams of our liquid. To this, we're gonna add in sodium alginate. Now for this, you're gonna use half a gram of sodium alginate. So it's about a half a percentage worth. We're gonna whisk this together on a high speed. You do need an immersion blender or something like this to make sure all of your sodium alginate is fully incorporated. The unfortunate thing is that it creates air bubbles and we have to wait for those air bubbles to go away before we can use it. So to make the bath for this, we're gonna actually need one liter worth of clean distilled water and about five grams worth of calcium lactate. Yes, you are gonna need some calcium lactate for this. We're gonna whisk this together, get water all over the place because they didn't use a big enough bowl, but you do need Again, a high-powered whisk to make sure that all those granules are brought together. Jeez, I made such a mess. We're gonna test out just a couple of pearls with our solution to see how it comes out. After dropping a few in, you can see that the pearls aren't quite coming together because my technique is horrible. So I do practice this quite a few times. If they aren't coming together, what you can do is end up adjusting some of the ratios that we previously used, which is what we're going to have to do since these aren't really hitting the mark. Once you pull the pearls out, you do need to rinse them in a little bit of fresh water, but you can see they kind of just mush together. So unfortunately, the pearls aren't holding up too well. I'm gonna try it one more time, see if we can get it to stick. If not, we may add a little bit of xanthan gum in there to help thicken up the solution itself. If not, we may try to add a little bit more calcium into the other stuff, and we just gotta play with it. To help solidify our actual nori pearls, I decided to add another half a gram of sodium alginate to the actual mixture. Blend this thing together, you're gonna get some air pockets, and we have to do the whole waiting process again. But my technique was a lot better here, and they started to come together and hold their shape. I went ahead and strained them, and we're gonna strain these and add them to a little bit of fresh water, but they look a little weird because we didn't allow for those air bubbles to go away yet. Thankfully, the kuzu sauce is actually really easy to make. For this, we're gonna need about one cup worth of our dashi, one tablespoon of soy sauce, followed by one half tablespoon of mirin. We're gonna heat this over a gentle heat to bring it to a simmer and grate in about one inch worth of fresh ginger straight into your sauce for some nice pop. My GoPro died right before I could thicken it, but you're gonna use one tablespoon of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water for a slurry to make it thick. This bacon miso soup is really, really easy to make, but also really good. For this, we're gonna use about one half a sliced onion. Make sure they're nice and julienne. And for the bacon, we're gonna slice three slices in half and then cut those into little pieces. You don't want these too big, otherwise it's gonna be really weird to eat inside of a very small bowl. Add your bacon and onions to a small sauce pot and get these nice and caramelized. You wanna render the fat and render the onions down just a little bit until you start seeing some nice color. After straining some of the fat out, we're gonna add in about two cups worth of our dashi. We're gonna let this thing come up to a beautiful simmer just so all those flavors really get incorporated and then add in two tablespoons worth of your white miso. You wanna quickly whisk this together and then bring the heat down. You typically don't wanna overcook white miso or any miso in general because it can hurt the flavor. Give this thing a taste and yes, it is delicious. We're gonna throw a lid on it, maybe not that lid. That's the lid we're looking for and let this hang out until we're ready for it. Tsukudani, you're gonna need the leftover noi from earlier and an equal part of the bonito flakes we also saved. To this, you're gonna add three tablespoons worth of soy sauce, two tablespoons worth of water, one tablespoon worth of mirin, and one tablespoon worth of sugar. Take the entire concoction over to the stove and bring this to a light simmer. We're really just trying to cook out a lot of the liquid so that way we can chop this stuff up. Give it a taste. It is actually really good. I love this stuff. 
And to help dry this out, since I don't have a dehydrator, what we're gonna do is put this on a paper towel and let this thing cool off before we chop this up by hand. You do wanna make sure that this is fairly chopped up really well, so that way we can fit it in between the layers of rice for later. Throw this back onto your paper towel and save this for later to hopefully dry out just a little bit more. Kinpira, you're gonna need some carrots, which I only had these baby carrots that I could find, unfortunately. So we're gonna use a little bit of burdock root and these tiny itty bitty little baby carrots to uh, cut into a julienne. Yes, this was not an easy thing and I thought it would be fine, but uh, we were able to do it. You're gonna cut the burdock the same way just to make sure you have nice even pieces in the style of a julienne for your carrots and your burdock so they cook evenly. In a separate container, add in one tablespoon worth of soy sauce, one tablespoon worth of sugar, and one tablespoon worth of mirin. You can see there's a theme with these ingredients. We're actually gonna fry up about 50 grams worth of pork in some homemade mayo, and then add in our burdock and our carrots. Since we're using mayonnaise to actually fry this, you wanna do this over about a medium heat so that way your mayonnaise doesn't break down too much. Once you have some nice color on your pork and your burdock and your carrots, add in that little concoction we had made earlier. This is gonna help deglaze the pan and give this a really nice color and flavor. After tasting it, this was Omega, good job. To make the fish cake, we're gonna need some kind of a blender. So I'm gonna use this little guy and about four ounces worth of cod. We're gonna dice the cod up just into smaller pieces so we can actually fit it into our little food processor. To this, I'm gonna add in the equivalent of about one egg white, yes, it's liquid eggs, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then add in just about a tablespoon worth of potato or cornstarch. It calls for spices and parsley, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in some togarashi. We're gonna blend this thing up until it's completely pureed into what looks like my cat's food. This should work out, hopefully, Hopefully. We're gonna grab a little bit of plastic and dump your fish puree, that sounds so bad, onto the plastic just to kind of roll it a little bit. I found that it was a little bit difficult to roll, but we were able to get our chopsticks in the middle of it to get that kind of centerpiece of the actual fish cake. If you want, you can just buy fish cakes. Once it's nice and tightly packed, we're gonna put this into the middle of a saute pan on a medium heat just to start searing each and every side. It's super important that you do sear each side so it kind of holds together even though mine still sort of fell apart. After a few minutes, it should be cooked all the way through and ready to be cooled down. Cool this down on a paper towel just so it also drains some of the extra oils and set it to the side. For the beer batter, we're gonna use about one cup worth of all-purpose flour and just a little bit of your favorite Japanese beer. I'm using Sapporo for this and I'm slowly adding in enough beer to make sure it thins out to the consistency of pancake batter. At this point, we're on the home stretch. We just have to fry our fish and finish the spheres and then put everything together. This was a ton of components. I wanna see all this put together and I'm trying to make it to where how I would actually cook this for someone so everything stayed nice and hot. That's why you see everything kind of everywhere because you have to execute it all at one time. And if you wanna execute more watch time, hit me up on twitch.tv backslash chef PKR and buy my books. Now to finish the Nori Pearls, finish the fight, just like Master Chief. Now that they've relaxed a little bit, they actually dropped into our calcium liquid really, really nicely, and I was able to strain out these Nori Pearls. Unfortunately, they still weren't as dark as I would want it to, but they looked really good still. Now we get down to the cooking. We're gonna go ahead and dredge our cod with a little bit of salt and all of our AP flour just to make sure it's fully coated. Drop this into your beer batter and get this ready to fry. We're gonna drop this into hot oil at about 350 degrees. And then with the remaining beer batter, we're gonna drop in chopped seaweed. This is our nori. Go ahead and mix this up with your hands just to get the process done with because we do have fish in the fryer. Remove the fish cake, dredge this in flour, and then once you have that dredged, drop it into your now seaweed batter. Mine fell apart into two pieces, which actually worked out really well, and drop this immediately into your fryer oil. Once these are getting nice and golden brown is when you're going to remove them from the oil. This is about five or six minutes. Allow these to drain on a bit of paper towel so they don't get too soggy from any excess oil. Nice and golden. Now to unveil our bento box. This bento box was the only one I could find that had four containers within it. So for this, we're gonna go ahead and bust all of these out and we're gonna start laying all of our food into these. The smallest container, the one with the vent, is gonna be the one for the soup. Ladle in about two portions worth of soup and hit it with a bunch of fresh green onion. It looks delicious. Immediately throw the lid onto this. Now for your nori gohan, your nori rice. We're gonna do one layer of rice on the very bottom, followed by a layer of your tsukudani. You wanna make sure this is even as possible so when you go to eat it, it does have a nice balance to the overall dish. 
throw in your second layer of rice and pack this down just a bit, leaving about a third to a half of an inch off the top. Now take your nori pearls and dump these right on top of the rice. You do want to spread these out a little bit thin just because of how much rice is in here so that way the lid doesn't actually hit any of those pearls and potentially ruin them. Now add your quinpada to your next side dish. This is the second to last dish. We're going to add in our two pieces of fish, one fried cod and one fish cake and throw the lid on it. Don't worry, we add the mayo later. Last, but definitely not least, the kuzu sauce. The kuzu sauce is going to go into the smallest of your containers. Delicious, throw a lid on it, get this stacked up, ready to go. Throw your final lid back on, and we have finally created Yukihira's Noribento. Finally. Before we break into this thing, buy my books. There's something oddly satisfying about knowing that there's a hot meal in this jar. We have our kudzu sauce, our fish, and I did add the tartar sauce that we had made, our nori rice, and finally our bacon miso soup. This is a lot of food. This is substantial. If I had this for lunch, I'd probably just pass out afterwards. This is a lot of food. What did he start with? I think he started with the fish. Here's the nori crusted fish cake. It's tender, creamy, spicy. Ooh, that fish cake is really good. I haven't actually made a fish cake like that before. I'm really happy about it. Here's the fried cod. Now, Soma does simmer the cod before he fries it. I think that's a waste just because the cod is such a delicate fish anyways. And if you were to cook it twice, it may not hold up. Look at that cod with the beer batter. That's really good. And then you have these little accompaniments. It's just the burdock, the carrot, the pork that we fried in our homemade mayo. Mm, mm-hmm. That honestly ties it all together. That's really good. I can't remember the order that this went in. The pork soup, the miso soup next. Let's go for that. That is delicious. That is so good. It's rich from the bacon and from the onions. There's a nice saltiness from the miso itself. There's a little bit of sweetness too from when we caramelize the onions. Oh yeah. Oh, that's good. But now what everybody kind of literally lost their clothing over is this nori rice. Now, the pearls honestly are the hardest thing about this entire endeavor just because they are super temperamental. But the flavor is really nice. Mm-hmm. Look at the inside. You can see the layer of the seaweed paste that we had made with our pearls on top. This is perfect. They don't have the same pop as we're kind of going for, but they're really close. But remember, halfway through the judges eating this, he asked them to pour the kuzu sauce over the top of it. I honestly didn't think this could get any better, but that ginger just is, it makes it totally different. It brightens it up. It makes it so much easier to eat. Let me know how you like your bentos, hot or cold. I personally like cold bentos. The winner of last week's knife giveaway from Doll Strong is, congratulations, contact me. We'll get that sent out to you. If you want to support the channel, check out my books down below. Sign up on Twitch for live reactions of Food Wars and join us over on Patreon. My name is Chef PK here on Foodie Friday, bringing anime and video game food to life. Get subscribed and remember, keep playing with your food. Don't finna jump. Top when I speak, all cap with the speech till they caught up in the rapture. Slow out of line with the phrase game. Let's take a break, pin a long day.